welcome to this special edition of Spotlight on CERN. Acronyms are used in our daily working life at CERN. A new acronym is about to make its entrance into our vocabulary and its meaning will enhance our approach to work. The CCM. CCM stands for CERN Competency Model. What are competencies? Why does CERN need such a model? When will it be implemented? And what does it mean for each and every one of us? Today, Anne-Sylvie Catrin, the Head of Human Resources Department, joins us to shed light on the issue. So first of all, can you tell us concretely what a competency model is? Yes, maybe I should like to start first of all by saying what competencies are. So competencies are the knowledge, uh, the behaviours and the skills that individuals demonstrate when carrying out their tasks. And it is really the combination of these three elements which will drive performance and lead to excellence. So if I try to take a concrete example, uh, as knowledge we could have uh, knowledge of thermodynamics, behaviour would be demonstrating flexibility and the technical competency would be designing uh, mechanical systems. Uh, so that's what competencies are and now a competency, uh, frame, a competency model is the framework in which all these competencies are referenced and defined and they vary from one employee to the next because of course they have to reflect the employer's culture, its needs, its mission, its values as well as the profile of its staff. Mm. Why does CERN need a competency model? Well, we need one in order to develop consistency and coherence throughout our HR processes. The aim is really to have a common language, and if we have a common language, that will enhance transparency and productivity in, in the organisation as a whole. Uh, maybe a historical perspective, another, another angle is that competency management and competency models have been used in the industry for more than two decades and have also been used gradually, been introduced gradually in public sector employers. So most of the institutions that either we work with or we compete with do use competency models. So the model will prove useful not only internally but also in our interactions with the outside world. Concretely, what does the CERN competency model consist of and how did you develop it? So it consists of both technical and behavioural competencies. Technical competencies are areas of technical knowledge and know-how. And at CERN we have grouped them in several domains in order for, for us to find them more easily. And these domains are for example physics, mechanics, information and technology, legal, etc. The way in which we developed, the, uh, we identified the technical competencies was through a working group which was chaired by HR but which comprised representatives from each department because really for, for the technical part it's really important that the competencies be defined by the experts in the field so that they really reflect terms of reality and also that they are expressed in a way which are understandable by all. Um, so it's been quite a lot of work and I really, would really like to thank all the people who have participated to, uh, to this project for their commitment and their, and their availability. Now the work is close to completion and it's in the process of being validated by uh, each departmental management. The second part is the behavioural competencies and there, so behavioural competencies are the behaviours that we demonstrate on a daily basis in uh, the performance of our, of our tasks. There, the way in which we have worked is through focus groups, and in those focus groups we have asked people to try to think of what behaviours were at stake when they particularly appreciated working with or for with a colleague, uh, and also uh, symmetrically which were the behaviours that were uh, at stake when they really found it difficult to work or interact with someone. So it was very concrete. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we asked them to identify what was the competencies that we could expect from our leaders. Through that, we were able to identify 10 core competencies. So if I quote a few examples, we have achieving results, solving problems, communicating effectively, demonstrating accountability, etc. And five leadership competencies. So the leadership competencies are, for instance, optimizing resources or setting direction, bringing the best out of people. Then, uh, through this concrete work, we were able to identify uh, indicators of effective and ineffective behaviours that are linked to each competency. Then the last step was to ensure that the competencies were in line with the organisation's values, that we could really attach them to, uh, to each value. And then when we did that, uh, to, our relief, uh, to our great relief, it all you know, fell into place. So it shows that there is some consistency in the, in the process. Thankfully. <laughs> so you describe behavioural competencies. Are these really important in our technical environment? 
Yes, I believe they are, but uh, of course, it's uh, our technical competencies are, are key. They are, they are what really uh, have what shows our, our reputation, our credibility. Also, in our job, comes to a large extent from technical, from our technical competency. But really, I strongly believe that it is not only what we do that matters, but it's also the way in which we do it. It's also how we do it. And especially in a research environment like ours, because collaboration is more and more key to our successes, we cannot you know, develop the projects that we have at the, to the large scale at which we are working now just on our own. So there, really, behavioral competency are, uh, competencies are at stake. Also, two more elements. Uh, one is that as we evolve in our career, as we be, because we take managerial responsibilities, or because we participate in large projects, or because we will lead projects, as we evolve, behavior, behavioral competencies are more and more important, because the results that we obtain are largely obtained with or through others. So that's where behaviors come uh, come into play. And. Um, and I'm ready to take a bet. I'm ready to bet that you know, in your career, if you try to remember who you really loved working with or working for, well, behavioral competencies were at stake. It was you know, maybe because you, you enjoyed really working in a team where people were flexible, where they were able to, uh, to share their knowledge and to communicate, or for a boss who was able to set direction, give you recognition for what you did. You know, and and uh, I, I really think that this is what leads people to give their best and maybe do the extra mile that they wouldn't have done otherwise. Absolutely. How is this model going to affect our staff management process? is at CERN? Well, it's going to affect them uh, to a large extent because it's going to be really applied in all our management processes, recruitment, uh, assessment of people at the end of probation, performance management, award of indefinite contracts, learning and development, internal mobility, succession planning, manpower planning, really the whole lot. The whole lot indeed. And how exactly are you going to apply it to each area? Uh, so maybe I will focus on the areas where uh, it's going to come first, because we're going to apply it first in recruitment and in uh, the award of indefinite contract. So for recruitment, what will change there is that we will uh, use the, te the technical competencies will be uh, uh, used in each vacancy notice. So there. Uh, the, the gain there is that instead of uh, having to define each time the technical competencies, this part will be to a large extent pre-established, so we will save time. Uh, also for the behavioral competencies, we will pick from a menu rather than to have to invent like each time like we do each time. So I really believe it will be a, uh, an efficiency uh, gain. Also, because we will use a common language which is also meaningful outside the organization, my, our hope there is that it will allow us to attract a larger pool of candidates. Because, for example, instead of saying, uh, as, we sometimes, uh, as we sometimes say now, competencies in vacuum, which may sound a bit strange for somebody who <laughs> does not work at CERN, my understanding is that the competencies which are related to, uh, to that are more uh, in, the, in the field of mechanics. So we would express them in terms where, uh, which would mean that more people would be attracted to, uh, to, to our jobs at, uh, at CERN. So uh, that's for, for the vacancy notice. And after that, in the recruitment process, in the selection interview, we will use a new technique, which is called CBI, so another acronym. <laughs> it's competency-based interviewing. It means that we will be able really to uh, probe a bit further and to really establish whether a person has a given competency or not. So that's for recruitment. Then for uh, the award of indefinite contract, we will replace six of the seven criteria which are currently used by the behavioral competencies. Uh, and we will use the technical competencies to shortlist uh, the, the, the candidates. So uh, there again, we, there we will really assess all the behavioral competencies because it's a very important decision. It commits the organization and the individual for, on average, 30 years. So it seems fair that we would assess the whole competencies. And then gradually, we will introduce the competencies also in the promotions exercise, where we will review the career path guide uh, for internal mobility in order to identify the, you know, individuals which have the competencies in order to fill a certain uh, internal vacancies, etc., etc. 
then in the performance uh, appraisal, then we will assess the results of the objectives, not only in terms of what was achieved, but also how it was achieved, meaning the competencies that were demonstrated or which need further development. And here I'd like to say, because there were some uh, worries in the process, that maybe we were going to start rating competencies in the, in the MARS form. So we're not going to do that uh, at all. We're just replacing the narrative appraisal with uh, a, a set of competencies that were demonstrated or needed uh, further development. So that's, uh, that's for the performance uh, management part.